Summary of Milkweed by Jerry Spinelli The earliest thing that Stop Thief remembers doing is running while holding a loaf of bread tightly to his breast. Stop. Thief, they yell as they chase him. One day, just before the Germans invaded Warsaw, Poland, in 1939, a teen with red hair named Yuri grabbed a younger boy named Stop Thief as they were both trying to steal from the same woman on the street. The kid tells Stop Thief that jackboots, Nazi forces, are coming because sirens are going off. Yuri says his name and takes Stop Thief to a barn where there are other street kids. The poor boys make fun of Stop Thief because he is small and doesn't pay attention to what's going on around him. They think he must be Jewish or, more likely, a gypsy, which is a derogatory term for the Roma people. Yuri likes Stop Thief, so he brings him back to his hideout in the basement of an old barber shop. As the Nazi jackboots take over Warsaw and start to treat Polish Jews badly, Stop Thief is too naive to realize how cruel the soldiers are. He admires their shiny boots and thinks the soldiers like him. Yuri tries to teach Stop Thief to stay away from Nazis and be quiet when he steals food, but Stop Thief often doesn't listen to him. This makes Yuri angry and violent towards Stop Thief. Yuri likes the boy anyway, and he gives him the name Misha Pilsudski. He also makes up a past for Misha, saying that he comes from a big gypsy family that lived in a wagon party and traded horses and told fortunes as they went. Misha has faith in him. Misha makes friends with Janina Milgram, a little girl he meets when he steals a tomato from her family's backyard. He learns that Janina's family is Jewish. Misha starts taking extra loaves of bread and leaving them for Janina's family. He does the same thing Yuri did and steals coal to help Dr. Korchak's home for children. In the fall after that, all of Warsaw's Jews are forced to live in a small, crowded area called a ghetto. Even though Misha is probably not Jewish by blood, he stays with them and sleeps in the rubble with the other street children or in the Milgram's small apartment. After a few months, he finds a tiny hole in the slum wall that he can fit through. He starts sneaking through the wall at night to steal food from restaurants and rich homes and bring it back for the Milgrams and Dr. Korchak's kids. One night, the Nazis make everyone leave their homes and stand at attention in the snow for hours, punishing anyone who falls. After Misha and the Milgrams get through this together, Mr. Milgram thinks of him as part of the family even though Janina's uncle Shepsel doesn't like it. Misha stops calling himself Pilsudski and starts calling himself Milgram. By the next summer, Janina was getting out of the slum at night to join Misha on his smuggling runs. Misha doesn't like that Janina is following him, and he knows he can't keep her safe. But she won't stop, even when the jackboots start threatening to punish traitors. Misha tells on Janina to Mr. Milgram, who scolds her, but Janina still sneaks out and steals on her own. In the end, Misha's orphan friend Alec is found smuggling and hanged for it. Even though it's dangerous, the kids don't stop because they're too hungry. Janina finds a milkweed plant growing well in an alley one day. Its fluffy seeds make her happy and remind her of angels. Misha meets Yuri, who hasn't been spending much time with the other children lately, on a run to sneak things into the Nazi hotel. Yuri works at the hotel, and he says, I don't know what I'm doing. Misha tells him he won't call him Yuri anymore and says he will shoot him if he comes back. That winter, Mrs. Milgram, Janina's mother, dies after being sick for a long time. Things are getting even worse in the ghetto. More and more children are wandering the streets, and seven new people have moved into the Milgram's small home. Food is getting harder and harder to find. Mr. Milgram asks Misha to enjoy Hanukkah with the family for the first time. He says that Jewish people should never forget how to be happy. Janina, on the other hand, is getting sadder. Misha tries to make her feel better by looking all over the city for an egg just for her. Yuri suddenly shows up in the ghetto one day and tells Misha that trains are coming to take the people who live there away. He tells Misha to run away and to never, ever get on a train. Misha tells his friends and family that they will soon be sent away. Sure enough, trains come and start taking people out of the neighborhood one street at a time. 
Some people think they'll be moved to Jewish towns in the East. An old man who says he fled shows up in the ghetto and tells everyone that the resettlement story is a lie and that people are being killed and their bodies are being burned in ovens. Most people laugh at him, but Mr. Milgram tells Misha in a quiet way that he and Janina should leave Warsaw. Misha figures out that Mr. Milgram knew about the smuggling at night but didn't try to stop it. He knew that the children might be safer outside the ghetto than inside it, so he didn't try to stop them. Misha and Janina have trouble getting back into the slum one night after smuggling because the normal holes have been filled in. When they finally get through an open gate near the train stop, they find that Mr. Milgram is gone. Misha can't find Janina in the crowd as she runs toward the trains that are about to leave. He finally sees her in the arms of a soldier as she is being thrown into a boxcar. Misha thinks she looks as graceful in the air as a milkweed seed. The next thing Misha knows, a Nazi is hitting and kicking him with a club. The Nazi has red hair and a voice that Misha knows. Just before the Nazi shoots the young guy, Misha realizes that it is Yuri. Misha finally wakes up, and when he does, he finds that his ear has been shot off. There are no more cars. Misha follows the tracks out of the slum, hoping to catch up to Janina. Misha walks along the tracks for a long time, hungry, hurt, and seeing things. A Polish farmer finds him after a few days. Misha has to work for the farmer and live in his barn. At night, the farmer ties him to a post. Even though Elzbeda, the farmer's wife, is kind to Misha, he has to work there for three years. The farmer's wife finally let him go one night, gave him a loaf of bread, and told him to run. By the time Misha gets away from the farm, World War II is over and there are tens of thousands of homeless people walking along the train lines. Misha slowly makes his way back to Warsaw. When he gets there, he sees that the ghetto has been destroyed. He finally starts to understand that Yuri was trying to keep him from dying in a concentration camp, even though he had been lying about being a Nazi. Misha learns how to fit in with the rest of society, but he always ends up taking again. He works hard and saves money until he has enough to move to the United States. Misha, who was given the name Jack at immigration, has a hard time finding steady work in America, but he finds that he is best at sharing stories about his life in the slums. He spends a lot of time in Philadelphia standing on street corners and talking about his life. Even though most people think he is crazy, every once in a while someone stops to listen. One day, a woman named Vivian hears him and becomes his friend. They finally get married, but Vivian leaves after a few months because Misha is hard to live with. He has nightmares, has trouble with social rules, and sometimes steals small things. Misha thinks Vivian might be pregnant. Misha goes back to talking on street corners until, many years later, a woman in her 70s gently touches his damaged ear and says, We hear you. It's over. Misha works at a food store. One day, a young woman comes up to him while he is filling shelves. The woman says her name is Catherine and that she is his daughter. She's been looking for her father for a long time. She also talks about her four-year-old daughter, Wendy. Wendy doesn't have a middle name because Misha hasn't given one to Catherine yet. Misha quickly picks Janina, and Catherine asks Misha to move in with her and Wendy. Misha cares for Wendy Janina during his last years. Wendy calls him Poppy Noodle. He grows a milkweed plant in the garden to remember him of Janina, but he's never told anyone else Janina's story. Misha's thoughts are finally quieted by Wendy's happy voice, which drowns out the sounds of jackboots. About the author. Spinelli was born in the Pennsylvania town of Norristown. He wanted to be a cowboy or a professional baseball player when he was young. But when his song about a title football game was published in a local paper when he was in high school, he realized that writing might be a good way to make a living. He went to Gettysburg College and majored in English. He also took writing classes at Johns Hopkins University. After writing four novels for adults that were never published, he found his way again by chance when one of his stories caught the attention of a publisher for children's books. So, Space Station 7th Grade came out in 1982, 
and Spinelli stopped writing for adults after that. The Newbery Medal was given to Maniac McGee in 1990. Spinelli now lives in the Philadelphia metro area in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. He and his wife, Eileen, had six kids, and now they have more than 20 grandkids. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.